Okay, it says started. Okay, we are back, I think. Yeah. Sorry. I don't uh, know if people are still with us or not. If everybody who was with us before is got killed. Oh, really? And we'll have to come back. Okay. Are you back? So sorry about that. That's terrible. We're almost, we're still just fixing just a couple things. Mmm, bummer. But you guys knew how to find us. Aww. Okay, yay. <laughs> we're running to, oh no, I'm not even going to say. Never mind. <laughs> it was our fault. It wasn't you two. Yes, absolutely. So you guys probably didn't hear me, but I was saying hi to all of you. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> So, <clears throat> we are going to do something fun tonight. What? It was our weekend in review. I just like in passing said how I got molasses at the farmer's market because I make my own brown sugar now and I'll need more of it for uh, holiday cooking. So, halfway through this, we're going to actually do uh, several people asked to show how to make brown sugar. I know it was something I didn't know how to do till one day I needed it for a recipe and I looked it up. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how I, how I do it. I don't know that it's the only way or necessarily the right way, but. Uh, and yesterday we took the pigs to market. So that was a really eventful day. I did not cry. I was brave. And at the end of it, uh, or by the end of dropping them off, I was like, see ya. Because <laughs> it was uh, a little bit, but a little it, challenging. It, was, it was challenging and it was crazy. Yeah. So I don't think we had a chance for like any emotions mm -hmm. to come along because it was like we need to get this done and we need to finish this task and see this through. But then like when we left and we were driving, oh, that was when we started getting yeah. sad and we were yeah. thinking about them. And yeah, I kept saying like I got to get my mind off of this. <clears throat> hey, oh, thank you, Practical Modern Fo Homestead. I'm so glad you're here. I saw somebody else said it was their first uh, time joining our live stream, too. Who is that? Uh, Homestead in the Highlands, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. Yeah, but we did get a call from our butcher today. We have our hanging weights. So we're going to be compiling the whole yesterday's event and summing it up with the hanging weights uh, in a video. Probably... I, I had hoped to get it out tomorrow, but it'll probably be later this week. So stay tuned for that. I don't want to spoil it tonight. It's going to be really hard for me to keep my mouth shut and not let it slip, but it's good news. Yeah, and the video, um, I think the video, if we have all the footage that we think we have, and we did lose some, because but if we, have, yeah. if we have all the footage that we think we have, this should turn out to be a pretty cool video, and you probably get some laughs. Oh my out of gosh! It. I I know <laughs> if it was me watching it, we, the whole time we were at the place because we had to unload them ourselves. Uh, there was no help around, and this is our first time, and uh, we were just cracking up at ourselves, saying, "If they have cameras <laughs> watching us right now." <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm surprised I just didn't pee my pants. Hey Joe, how are you? Hey Bromark Farms, welcome. Welcome, I see a lot Cynthia. of new, new hi, people hi. here tonight. <clears throat> oh, is there an echo? Do you have your speaker agenda? No, this computer over here is doing nothing. Okay. From the streaming perspective. But okay. Here we can... Uh, Maybe your phone's causing something? I don't know. Nope. Hmm. Gons, welcome back, buddy. We are the same. So let us know how the audio is, if that if that help matters any. I'm not sure if it did. Rose, you had some awesome visitors last week with the hollers being at your place. That looked fun. 
Um, yeah, so let's show some pig videos. Since we do have a lot of new subscribers, you guys might not know, this is our first year raising pigs. And uh, back June 2nd, we got these two little guys, or girls. Um, they were our red wattles. And I think they were like eight or nine weeks old when we got them. And Todd was recalling yesterday when he uh, brought them from the driveway back to the paddock where we raised them out. Uh, he carried them by one one foot upside down the whole way. Mm -hmm. One foot, and, one handed. Yeah. Those little pigs. And uh, they sure grew up big. And I tell you what, I loved, loved raising them. So this was probably a couple months ago. And I would just go out there and spend time with them. And this one is uh, Q, and she just had the one waddle. And she was the most loving, sweetest pig in the world. That was the nice one? Yes. She would come up to all of us and just give us so much loving. And, uh, hey Trish, good to see you here. And then this was how we actually trained them to make sure that we had an easy morning hauling them away. So they were already used to sleeping in this little summer shelter we built for them. And uh, so we loaded their shelter onto the flatbed little utility trailer and started feeding them out of there in the morning. And we struggled with it the first couple of days until we put the stall mat on the ramp. And that helped them be more comfortable walking <coughs> up that metal grating. And Monday morning went like a breeze. It was easy peasy. <coughs> the loading portion did. Yep, yep. Sorry, my coughing. I think we had them loaded in like 30 seconds. Yeah, it was so easy. Once we prep, 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 let's get everything ready. Okay, Don't now's the, the time. Don't give the whole video away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Yeah. But those pig butts are the cutest. Um, so our butcher is about a 20-minute drive from us, and this was us at the chutes to unload them and uh, we kind of just backed ourselves up and checked things out and then once we opened the door they were just resting and sleeping <laughs> and not a care in the world or a desire at all to get up and come out <laughs> I think they kind of uh so Joe asked, did you plan that shelter ahead to fit the trailer? Not at all. Nope. Zero plans to do that. In fact, I had to cut about an inch off of each side to get it to actually fit in there. There was actually um, there was a whole separate video that we did just on that shelter that was designed for our goats. Before we even had our goats, we mm -hmm. wanted to build a shelter for them. And so it's basically some four by fours in a four by eight frame with some cattle panels across the top and a tarp. If Nick, Nick, if you're still on here, throw, throw a link to that goat fort video up if you could. And we didn't really plan on using it because I didn't think it would fit. He kept, I kept saying, and I, ladies, when we get those moments where we can say, I told you so, sometimes it's so fun. <laughs> and I kept telling him, it will fit. I know it will. It's going to fit. He was so determined. He needed to learn to weld to build this big old cage to fit in the back of that trailer. And I said, honey, I know you want to learn it, but time's running short. And by the time you figure this out, I'm not going to have any time to train them to it. Can we just go measure that thing and see if it will fit? And <clears throat> with gritted teeth, he had to agree it was going to work. <laughs> hey, she Texas right. boys. It Hi. I, was, I still had some concerns that it fit, but I was still worried. About whether or not it was strong enough. Because it was and... built it was built with the intention to shelter, not contain. Right. Once we got it on the trailer and I looked it over and refreshed my memory of how it was constructed, I felt pretty good. 
and it seemed to work out just fine. It did. You know, he added an extra piece of welded wire panel to the front, and, you know, with the tailgate mm -hmm. lifted up, it definitely made it more secure. But eventually we got them loaded and look at those, or unloaded, and look at those sweet little sad eyes. I'm sure they cried for us. They were a little pouty. Uh, God said, Todd, have you not learned the wife is always right? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm not. And then, oh, yes. Oh, I miss those guys. I tell you, it was a sad morning going out doing chores this morning. They weren't doing their little snort snorts at me. Sometimes oh, I'm just didn't. checking up on the cat, the chat, and pasting a couple, a couple of links for people. Any good comments or chats to catch up on? Oh, I see now. I heard you mention the Texas boys. Hi guys, welcome. You guys are always doing your live streams in the morning, and we always do ours in the evening. Like we had a request from Liz, from Liz Zorab, and I think a couple other people to say, "Hey, can you guys move your live streams up earlier in the evening so it's not so late?" Have not decided. Still, something we're kicking around. We got to make sure we're not going to cross streams with somebody else, right. and we want to respect other channels and. Mm -hmm. I think for us personally, it may work well because you're not a night person. You're a morning person. Yeah, and... like once the live stream done, I like literally say goodnight to him and I walk <laughs> right upstairs to go to bed. So, um, yeah, we just want to check on other the other live streams that might be going on in the community because we definitely don't want to step on anyone else. I know Out of Goshen does theirs at 630 today, right. so... We kind of just have to check that out. Check a wolf. Hi. Hey. We miss you guys. Yeah, and Goshen, Goshen, he'll run like a half an hour stream or he'll run for two hours. Yeah, it's we not never consistent, know, so right? Yeah. We really can't do too much about that. But Well, we could. Um, like, I think, too, for all of you guys, we've been going live since, like, October-ish again because we took the summer and harvest season off and we're gonna be going next week live and then we'll take the two weeks for the christmas break off so maybe new year when we start back up we'll we may adjust our time just to give folks overseas more of an opportunity to join us um, and then people that have little ones I know like Life on Beagle Road rarely gets to join because they're usually putting their kids to bed around this time. So we'll see what we can do. We did hear about Liz's channel. That's a true bummer. It was a, definitely a good lesson learned that she shared with us, whether or not that was the cause. Right. Um, just as something to be aware of. Watch where you click. It doesn't sound like YouTube's rules are necessarily something that's very forgiving that's one of the main reasons guys and i know a lot of you do it it's one of the main reasons that we will never host another contest or giveaway on our channel because it is literally breaking the bylaws of our agreement with youtube if you're going to give something away you have to give it away to everyone that's participating in your channel you cannot select just one person so that's why we go outside of YouTube to do any contest. So just be careful. Read those rules, and they're their rules. So we have to abide by them to participate on this platform. Okay. So you want to do any brown sugar time? What time is it? 9.20? Yeah. I mean, it's probably yeah. only going to take like 10 minutes, if that. Yeah, we could. I have one other thing, and let me see if I remember. Hi, my Grace. Welcome. No, I don't think I do. One of the things we had our whole November... Thanksgiving? November month of thankfulness. And last week on our show, we featured... What was it? 43, I think. 43 YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. 
small YouTube channels less they had to have less than a thousand subscribers and I see a lot of people in our chat tonight that have YouTube channels so if you guys have a channel and you're in our chat tonight feel free to post a message don't don't spam our chat please by any means but if you have a channel and you think there's people here that may not be subscribed to you throw a comment out there so we can check you guys out and, and we can keep spreading a little bit of love mm -hmm. yeah I, I would ask just just like a comment don't take over the chat from what it is that we're trying <laughs> exactly, to accomplish yeah. be respectful and, yeah um, and the only other thing was when we're talking about schedules and things like that we'll have our live show this week and then we'll have another live show next week on Tuesday. And then we're probably be going to be off until... Yeah, I already said that. We're going to take two weeks You said off. it tonight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's how much he listens. I don't pay attention to you. <laughs> you never write anyways. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get into brown sugar making. We're going to put you on pause for like, what, 20 seconds? Yep, we will try to... I don't Do want to make fast. you guys busy or dizzy switching the camera around and making sounds. So we're going to switch a couple of things. We'll be back in like 30 seconds. Okay. video <laughs> yeah back up just a little just a little yeah that's fine from from an audio perspective you're pretty far away now okay can you hopefully you can still hear me just fine so making brown sugar is super easy you just need your regular sugar that you use I use cane sugar and molasses I can't remember who all asked but it's gonna to do a video on making brown sugar, it would be like a two-minute video. So I thought I'd just do it in here. And you can make, I don't use measurements. Some people like light brown sugar. Some people like heavy brown sugar. Just um, make as much as, as rich as you want and as much as you want. And I have a container that I'll put it in later. So I just have some sugar in the bowl. And I'm just going to take some molasses and pour it in. And I'm going to mix that until it's the right consistency that I want for brown sugar. And that's as simple as it is. You kind of, I use a fork and just smash it around. I'll show you when it's done. So talk to them, Tom. You need to be sitting over here so they can see you too. I'm sorry, I was catching up on the chat. Several people have been shouting out some that they have channels. Okay, who? So that's cool. Uh, Red Duchess, Willow yeah. Creek Homestead, they have a channel. Well, Red Duchess was one of the people that got subbed to from the contest. I know. Oh, Willow Creek. So <laughs> I they said have Willow a Creek. That's funny. Uh, Inside Kate's Kitchen, that's one of the channels. Mm -hmm. We should have farm on Quail Hollow. Of course, they were featured last week, and our they were one of the channels that got mm -hmm. mentioned by by somebody. Shade Tree Four by Four. I know that guy has a channel. He's kind of new. Uh, Imagine Acre Wood. So that they met a lot of lot of new people from these live streams. Thanks for joining us tonight. Who was that again? Shade tree or imagine acre imagine wood. Acre Welcome. Almost Homestead says they're getting closer to 900 subs. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Hope we helped you guys out some. 
Okay, I think it's done. See, that was fast. I'm going to walk it up and show you. Yeah, there you go. So see, nice brown sugar. Um, and you know when you uh, typically recipes say when you make brown sugar, it needs to be packed. So that you're kind of looking for that ability to pack the brown sugar. And now I use this for my goat dewormer balls and, and recipes that I need. So then once I make a batch of it, I'll just store it. Um, and this would be a dark brown sugar, so if you wanted it lighter, you just wouldn't add as much molasses. And there you go. That's how you make brown sugar. A couple other channels that shouted out, uh, Clueless Homesteaders. They have a channel, Leatherwood Land. Homestead in the Highlands. They said they're brand new, they're not even two weeks old, and their third video is now uploading. Welcome to the world awesome. of YouTube. That's cool. okay, that's Let's it. see who else we have here. I'm sure I'm missing some because I scrolled all the way up and now I gotta scroll all the way back okay, well, down. I'm gonna slide you and not be as gentle as Todd was. All right. Living Garden asks, what kind of molasses is that? Blackstrap molasses. Blackstrap molasses. Apparently, we bought it from a gentleman who is kind of my. I don't know if you'd call him my bee mentor. He's a, a fellow beekeeper who I met at. The local farmers market, mm -hmm. and he has some friends. Was it friends or family members up know. in northern Michigan who make this molasses from sorghum? Is that correct? Yep, sorghum. Yep, it was blackstrap molasses. So I don't know that that's the only way to do it, but I know something that I. I make sure to, where I can and where it's cost effective to use organic products when I purchase things that I need. It was very hard to source in my local big grocer's um, organic brown sugar. And it was one of those things that I really don't use a lot of. So once I found this trick, I was like, I will never buy Brown sugar again. Practical Modern Homestead said that they have a channel and 815 subs so far. <clears throat> awesome. There was another comment that I just saw and I lost it. It is very simple to do. Super easy. So White Picket Fence does molasses taste better in the sugar than maple syrup. What? Does molasses taste better in the sugar than maple syrup? I've never put maple syrup in the sugar, so I don't know. Like you would use maple syrup to make brown sugar instead of molasses? I think molasses is a derivative of, of a type of sugar cane from sorghum, so they would strip out, extract the the syrup from sorghum and you could get brown brown sugar and uh, extract the molasses from that. Uh, Leatherwood Land asked if there was any good recommendation for bee books. Um, I just threw a link to our Amazon store. I think we have one or two of our favorite beekeeping books in our Amazon shop. One yeah, was but, like the Beekeeper's Bible. Yeah, that's a really, really good one. A lot of color pictures. Things to like watch out for. Think behaviors to understand about the mm -hmm. bees. Um, but I, I'm because we're doing shout outs, I'll never hesitate to shout out a channel that we frequent with respect to beekeeping, and that's Vino Farms. Um, very knowledgeable guy. Uh, very willing to share his mistakes. Uh, I think, what is it, his 
third or fourth year keeping bees. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, kind of experimenting with splitting concepts and... We've learned a lot just he from watching. He split a lot this year. Mm -hmm. He started out this year with, what, three hives and ended with, like, nine or something? Yeah. Do I know how to make a baking powder or a substitute? Nope, not yet, but you've given me something to research. I'll figure it out. So I've... <clears throat> I think my mom taught me this when I was little. And uh, I can't remember what it was. Sorry, Todd's moving the light. Um, it was... It's a little harsh. Maybe she showed me in a cookbook about like things that recipes might call for and you can use a substitute, things you could substitute for it. So like one of my go-tos is if a recipe calls for vegetable oil, um, I'll often, even because I, I, I don't buy vegetable oil, but I'll have sunflower oil or something like that that I could use. And I'll choose to use applesauce in replace of that. Um, so I do a lot of substitutions naturally, um, but I've never had to substitute baking powder yet. It was Thanksgiving weekend. You substituted Bisquick, right? Oh, I didn't substitute. I just made my own homemade Bisquick. Right. Yeah. Cream of tartar and baking soda. There you go, Red Duchess. Make a video on it so we can all learn. <clears throat> Thanks, Amy. Appreciate it. Well, I everyone somebody, knows that uh, trick. I don't know that trick. Yeah, I saw somebody earlier said that they got five subs already from tonight. Fantastic. Those are always fun nights. Mm -hmm. What else do we have to show folks? I know somebody else, what they asked to see from our Weekend in Review? The, oh, I made cinnamon rolls. Um, somebody asked me to do a video on making cinnamon rolls. It's a real, the recipe I do, it's, it's a pretty lengthy process. So I may, I think I'm actually done making cinnamon rolls for the year. So if I made another batch, I'd probably split it in half which would be a more reasonable like family size recipe because it would make like two dozen. So I might do that. Good night, Clueless Homesteader. Thanks for joining. <coughs> I think Kate's Kitchen said she had 216. 216. And just got five more subs. Fantastic. Well, so we have another problem that when life gets busy, sometimes, I guess maybe things for you guys to think of as it's Christmas time and you might be ordering things online and stuff. We have lost or had stolen one of our kids' significant Christmas presents. So I called up the retailer that I purchased it from and, uh, finally filed a claim today but we tore this house inside <laughs> out and upside down we thought we had received it because it was an early purchase like in October it was like a deal and uh, could not find any said package anywhere in this house um, so Instead of moping about it, I just called them up and they filed a claim with the delivery company. Um, it shows that it was delivered. We don't have it. <laughs> so. It was one of those weird situations, too, where I think we had multiple packages arriving at, like, at or around the same day. Well, because it, it was right at the kid's birthday time. Mm -hmm. And you had ordered a dress. Yeah. That came from like DHL or something like that and I came home from work one day and I saw it sitting on the porch and I'm like oh that's probably that mm -hmm. present and so I remember taking it and I brought it upstairs to our bedroom and I set it on the side of the bed and I told her hey that package came today but now we find out today that the missing package was 
delivered by FedEx. Yeah. And, and I told him all this time that I, because I only asked once, you know, did that thing ever come? He's like, yeah, I set it next to your bed. And I was like, oh, okay. Never thought anything of it. And I went to wrap presents on Friday to get a head start. And it's not there. <laughs> and I'm like, honestly, I'm not. I don't think, anyway, I'm crazy enough to have picked up a package that's not been opened and throw it away. I've done crazy stuff, guys. I've, like, put my keys in the fridge, like, <laughs> stupid stuff, like, put the milk away, but put it in the microwave, you know. I just don't think I would do that, though, knowing that in my subconscious that that's... An important present <laughs> and so as we got talking about it and then we finally found out it was a FedEx delivery I'm like so you're certain you brought in a DHL package that was my dress that was not this mm -hmm. so just be careful and keep track of things that you do buy watch those tracking numbers and if you bring them in the house don't forget where your hiding spots are <laughs> We don't have hiding spots. The kids know they just don't go in mom and dad's room at Christmas time. They just go next to our bed. So, mm -hmm. Leatherwood Land, thanks for joining tonight. I hope hope you had fun. Yeah, uh, Cynthia, I know. I that's what I was talking to the lady, and I said I I would hate to think that because we live in such a rural community, and um, but perhaps. I I never tend to lean to think towards the worst of people, which probably got has gotten me in trouble before, but it could have happened. So Kate, I'm going to assume you're Kate, since your name is Inside Kate's Kitchen, asked how the name for our channel came about. So our homestead, or our home, uh, was built in the 1870s, specifically 1876, based on all the research that has been conducted so far. So it's pretty old, and that was well, the name that we that we landed on. Yeah, but at the time when we we started with an Instagram account, and we when we first bought the property, we wanted to capture what it was that we were doing on with our new life, and. Um, we needed a, a name for our Instagram account. And at the time, we didn't know what year the house was built. We just knew it was in the 1870s. So he couldn't decide on a channel, or not a channel name, but an Instagram account name. I couldn't. We were going back and forth. I said, I'm just going to call it that 1870s homestead. That's the real story. <laughs> and She's always right. How many kids do we have and what are their ages? We have six. No, we don't. <laughs> we have, we five. have five. And they're 23 to 22 year olds, a 20 year old, and our daughter's eight, almost 18. All in, gosh, why is it blurring? I don't it's know. It's very frustrating. Let me clean the lens a little bit. Um, let's see, they're all out of the house doing the either. The youngest son is still in college. No one else is still in college. Abigail is a senior in high school and will be going off to do her thing. Which we think she's finally made up her mind what she wants to be. If you're watching, honey, I'm sure you should be doing homework. Back and forth, school, no, I want to be a wanderer and just live in a van, to I'm going to be a heart surgeon, to uh, she loves the medical field, but then she learned how expensive it all was and that she will leave the situation with debt. So I kept encouraging her and encouraging her that she has choices there are women serving in our military that have amazing careers, or there are a lot of trades 
out there that don't require college degrees that make awesome earnings and livings that you can look into. So right now she's thinking about the paramedic field. So she went on a field trip today on like a go and see and actually intubated the dummy and had a lot of fun, it sounded like. so. Cool. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Uh, she did, has considered a physician's assistant. She's, again, just not interested in the college uh, debt. She is a saver. Uh, she, she's our only kid that worked, like, a job while in high school, and she puts it almost all to savings. So she's just got this financial wisdom at a young age that, uh, yeah, I'm not putting myself into debt to do that, no. Which I'm fine with. Um, our other kids have chosen to go to college, and well, two of them, and uh, we'll have student loans that they have to pay back. We had another son that chose to do the Navy, so and he's making an excellent career for himself. <clears throat> Doing quite well. And I saw Kate's kitchen said she was back, so I hope you uh, I hope you were here when we answered your question about the name for our channel. I guess if you haven't, uh, I think you can watch it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's fun to hear uh, your kids or see your kids go off and kind of discover what it is they want to do. And, our one son just walked down this morning and showed us the payoff of, from his first student loan he paid off, so that was rewarding to see. Mm -hmm. um, we have given the kids an option that after college they can come home and live with us for a year while they work on paying off their student loans so they're not entering the world with figuring out rent and bills and paying off student loans to help them relieve just a little bit of that burden. But his time is coming, and he's going to have to fly. <laughs> yes, indeed. We scored some stuff today. Oh, we did. I got a call from my dad like a week ago. He said, hey, I scored some wood chips. There was a bunch of wood, wood trimming guys in my yard cutting down a tree. Oh, that was from your dad's house? I don't know where it there was a bunch of wood cutting guys in his house, at his yard cutting down trees and they left all the wood chips for him. And he told them, he said, hey, if you need to drop off more wood chips for anybody, I know a guy. And he gave him our address. We got home from work today and we had a big old pile sitting on the side of the garage. Yes, and we needed them because our pile from the summer was just about gone. So we've got to redo the... Orchard rows. I need to redo the front landscaping around the beds mm -hmm. around the house. Um, it's mostly. It seems like a lot of it's pine, mm -hmm. and it smells amazing when you go outside. Yeah, that fresh chipped pine. But the thing is, is we want so much more, but we don't have anything other than our sheer brute strength and willpower to move it. Um, it's shovel at a shovel at a time into a pull behind utility trailer. Um, so we'll be checking out Craigslist for a, a bucket loader of some sort that we could have. Yeah, at some point we may have to upgrade our tractor and get something with some more functionality behind it. Yeah. That was one of the things I remember from uh, SSL Family Dad. He's talked about it a couple times in his channel that if you're gonna get started in homesteading and you're gonna buy a tractor, make sure it has a front end loader. Very true. I mean, the tractor's done us good for the few things that we've been able to use it for, mm -hmm. but it definitely has its limitations. Yeah. So, Wendy, I assume that's you or Troy, we looked 
for a long time to get sources of wood chips around here. Like I've signed up for the free drop delivery things and never anything. And it seems like what works is word of mouth. Like, or if you see like somebody actually doing trimming on the side of the road just to stop especially if they're within driving distance of your property because they do desire to find a place mm -hmm. to offload those because if if they have to take them to wherever they're required to take them to to offload them, it comes out of their pockets, I think, and it's time right. that they don't have to spend at work and everything. And uh, These guys were like, how much do you want? We can keep bringing them <laughs> yeah. to you. But unfortunately, we just don't have a way to effectively store them. I mean, unless we gave them access through the back back of our property and just had them drop, drop, drop. Once um, once it gets cold enough and the ground actually freezes, I won't have a problem with that. But yeah. right now, they would just that that truck would tear up our yard. Yeah, we spend more time fixing the ruts than it would be to haul the wood chips. Right. Yeah, same with us, Cynthia. It's either wheelbarrow or we've got a little small utility trailer that we can attach to the four-wheeler that's not much bigger than a wheelbarrow. Food Forest, welcome. Hey, guys. Welcome. Merry Christmas. Like I saw Food Forest in a couple of other live streams when we were watching. Were they on uh, Tangy and Jack's Jack and Tangy's last there. night and somebody yeah. over the weekend, too? Okay. Um... What else do we have to share? Oh, I know. So, oh my gosh. Abigail came home after work tonight, and she was like, Mom, I got home, and the goats were on the roof of their house. <laughs> I'm like, I, surely I didn't hear her right. I'm like, what'd you say? She said, the goats were on the roof of their house. And I'm thinking there's like literally no way to get on the roof of this house. So this is the outside of the little goat shelter that we built. So we put up these straw bales and hay bales around and ratcheted strap them just as insulation. Because they just had like a summer shelter. Todd's going to show you the roof. The roof is just like an attached to section roofing system that has these corrugated panels on it which you know hail can put a hole through these much less goat hooves <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have to go out in the morning and check that roofing and oh my gosh see if but, it's got holes in it now so we all immediately said did you get pictures she's <laughs> like well no i was freaking out that they were gonna like jump off and kill themselves so she said she went out there and she found how she thinks that they're getting up. And there's this one section at the front where we didn't completely block it off. So there is a little bit of a stair step. Um, but I'm still surprised that they can stair step that and get themselves up and over that. Mm -hmm. But they are. And uh, she said Philia, who is our black moon spot, she came down herself when she saw Abigail but Bathsheba, our brown one, was just running around like crazy <laughs> up there. So she had to get, uh, we have, what do you call those wire spools? One of those wire spools out there for them to play on. She rolled that over, got up there. She had to get on the roof herself, pick up Bathsheba and pull <laughs> her down. I thought, oh, what a sight. I would have loved to have seen that. Mm -hmm. Your mama girl's asking if the goats have been eating all of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, not the second round. Well, the first time we built it, we used hay. They ate it. They ate holes, skylights. They ate holes everywhere. So much so that the walls just started collapsing. Mm -hmm. It was a complete failure. I'm glad we didn't put a video out on that because <laughs> we did share it on YouTube. And we were very honest. We don't know how this is going to go because they're eating it. Exactly. And it didn't go well. So then... We a couple weeks later, you and Nick rebuilt it. Yeah, we sourced some straw this time instead of hay. And it's not all straw. The top the top row or the top two rows does have some hay mixed in, but for the most part, it's all straw. They're nibbling at it, but they're not eating holes in it like they did when it right, was hay. Right, right. 
But I think we need to go ahead with our plan C, which is to put tarps around it. I don't know Something. what's going to keep them. I mean, they can't do that, right? <laughs> they. I don't want them to get hurt. Well, oh. we know we know how they're getting up there, yeah. so we just need to do something to prevent that. And oh my goodness, those stinkers! Like, it, but the thing is, is it's close to the fence. We've never had an issue at all with our goats ever escaping or trying to escape. And if they're up there and they had the desire, they could leap out of the paddock. It would be quite the jump, but it would be. Yeah. But they can jump. Bless. I'm just catching up on the, yeah, Bathsheba is a funny goat name, it is, she, and she picked him out, uh, yeah, we'll see, <laughs> I have no idea, I did see Lumna Acres Goat Shed, I love it, it's very nice, Lum, I think he has a little bit more time on his hands than we do. So I have, guys, I see you talking about hardy kiwi, and I don't know where the conversation started. I bought two plants from TSC the first spring we lived here, so they've only been in a year. Um, I'm not sure what I should be expecting. I haven't seen any, like, flowers or definitely no fruits. And I don't know that I would know exactly what to look for. The vines look super healthy, but um, not sure if it just takes a while and it's one of those things that you got to wait five years. And Hey, Michigan Mike, what, welcome. Thanks for joining. Michigan Mike, I checked out your channel yesterday. And that Christmas one that you threw together with your face photoshopped on that little elf doing the DJ thing you had me cracking up laughing. <laughs> like you have a wonderful family. And you have a lot of canning videos. Oh, does he? Good. A lot of them, yeah. Oh, so that has to do with it, male and female? How would I know? How would I know? I bought them from TSC. Is there a way to tell? Male and female is needed, Rachel. See, I just, I don't know. I just got two vines and I planted them. That's <laughs> what happens when you don't do your research before you get into something. Oh my gosh. Permaculture, I rarely see any YouTube homesteaders mention sending their garden abundance to the food banks. Um, I could say I've yet to have enough abundance to send to a food bank, but I do know people that do. Um, let me think. <sighs> well, we've yet to, we've somewhat yet to overproduce anything to the point where it would become waste. No. I and mean... The one little bit of overabundance we had this year was our green beans, and I just offered our neighbors to come and harvest them because they didn't grow green beans. Mm -hmm. um, and since we had our pigs, yeah, there was another the source. Okay, this is starting chickens. to go bad. Let's mm -hmm. give it to the pig. Let's give it to the chickens and kind yeah. of keep the recycling on site. I'm trying to think, though. There was somebody that gives a lot to food banks and it's like a big part of their channel and I can't think of the name of it. So they, the people out there that are producing a lot, I know some of them are. You will know when it blooms, I guess so. Okay, so imagine Agerwood said he bought his kiwi vines from a reputable, reputable vendor. You likely got a male and female unless you chose a quantity to at checkout. No, it was just like, just two individually. <clears throat> um, so are you planning on raising pigs again? Yes, but not next year. Um, we know that we will have enough pork to see us a good year and a half, two years. Um, 
even with giving some away to some people. Yeah. <clears throat> Not that I don't want to. I just don't want to be foolish either. And I'm only going to raise the food that we need for our family. Um, so to, to do it again next year, I think I'll get myself in a waste situation. And I never want to be in that situation where I have food going bad because I can't use it. Um. Yeah, we couldn't get more pigs unless we had more freezers. Yeah, right. And more bellies to fill, honestly. I mean, after next year, Abigail's going to be gone, and it's legit going to be just Todd and I. Mm -hmm. As it is, she's not here most of the time anyway with all of her work and dance and stuff. So, <clears throat> Okay, good night, Christine. Thanks for joining. Doing mangalistas in the spring. That's fun. Who's doing mangalistas? What cuts did we pick? I guess you could. You have to be stay better. and wait for the video. They do? Yeah. I wasn't going to tell them. Oh, okay. I was going to say, what cuts didn't we get? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we got one of everything, just about. Well, we didn't get anything fancy. We really just stuck with the basics. Like, they offered all kinds of fancy stuff, like butterfly chops and stuff like that. Um, so we didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Just traditional. Rachel, you could raise them and sell them. <coughs> mm, I'm sure I could. <laughs> I'm sure I could. So I tried taste testing the waters, I guess, if that's the way you say that phrase. I don't know. Putting putting the feelers out this spring to see if, like, just my best friends in the area would be interested in, like, a CSA program and start really small. Um, I think I was doing, like, the meat chickens, turkey... Uh, like a quarter of a pig, uh, you know, giving them options of what they wanted to participate in the CSA for, the eggs, and then like a produce bag every week. And uh, they were all super excited till it came time to sign up for it. And then no one wanted to sign up for it. And I said, well, I can't commit to grow more chickens and more turkeys and more pigs than I need without a commitment. So that would, I don't know, with working full time right now and trying to manage that, I honestly, I don't, just don't think I'm interested right now. We are in Southeast Michigan. You're doing great. Way right. down here. Yeah. And Madison Ferris, hi, welcome. Hey, man. <laughs> How are you guys? Thanks. I'm glad you're here. That's one of our son's friends. Um, can the meat, it will last longer than in the freezer. I'm going to definitely try it this year for sure. I mean, we have canned um, our turkey, our chicken, and some of our ground beef that we got from the cow. So um, I've seen recipes that I'm really interested in on um, canning sausage and ham. So I'll definitely be trying that. So Rose said the same thing happened to her. Yeah. I just, I think that it's it's still a very foreign concept around here that uh, uh, the concept of supporting a farmer isn't something that's in our culture, really. Like, people just are very, still very comfortable going to the grocery store and getting their needs met, that they don't understand why I need to put an investment ahead of time well the farmers got to feed them they have to source the animals to raise them uh, i can't do that out of my own pocket without a commitment to raise this food for you so right it it, it is critical that you do um get it's a partnership the community has to understand that they're going in partnership with a farmer and that was another thing, too, that I, I researched a lot of CSAs, and I spelled that out in my agreement. That uh, And again, I was only trying this with like five or six people. 
um, to say that part of this agreement is you understand I may have a crop failure, I may have a pig die, I may have chicken loss. That's part of farming. Um, and you're taking on that or agreement with me that I'm going to do my very best to raise you the best food but life happens and nature is nature and if we go into a drought or something like that or we have a bad past year uh, and I think that that might have even been part that scared them off yeah Gans thanks for joining buddy good night Mike Heaven's Gate Cherry mm -hmm. Farm I think you've been here before. They yep. said they're from Michigan, and I think do you guys are on Instagram too? I think right? Don't we follow them on Instagram? I don't. I don't remember. I think so. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. So One of the we, things that I want to experiment, possibly maybe over the winter or next year, is um I'm a really big fan of meat sticks, whether it be sausage or I bought them yak sticks from the. Homesteaders of America Conference. Mm -hmm. Or like Slim Jim style. I'm, I'm not sure of like the technical name for it. Whatever Stefan made for us. Yeah. Um, so we're going to end up with a lot of ground pork. Unseasoned ground pork. So I want to play around with some of that. And maybe get us a, a grinder sausage stuffer at some point And play around mm -hmm. with an experiment with it. Yeah. But it's 10 o'clock. So it's my bedtime. It is? Yep. Did we get through everything? You're going to be so. a pumpkin. I know. Yep, I think we got through everything. So hopefully that was fun, doing a little something different, showing you how I make the brown sugar. And if you like it, I, that's another reason why we might think about moving the live show up a little bit is just because we'd like to do more engagement opportunities like show and tell things. And with it being 9 o'clock, I can't like necessarily cook a meal at mm -hmm. nine o'clock unless I put it in the fridge and wait for it for tomorrow. So just some fun things to think about. Mm -hmm. We loved having you all here. So many fun friends. Thanks for joining us. When someone asked what, if we have any tips on making our own chicken feed, we don't really make our own. We don't really blend our, our stuff together. I did at the very, very beginning. Remember mm -hmm. I went to that farm and I bought all my grains and I mixed all my feed for like the first four months. And when they were done with that, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> it was just, it to store it was a nightmare, number one. And then... Mixing it mixing all. Mixing it. I would enjoy it, honestly, I think, if I had a farmer that was closer to me. But this farmer was like an hour and a half drive and he's only available for Monday and Wednesday pickups so it just wasn't working for me I know Elliot Good Homestead idea. has a good blend um, that's where I got mine from so she gave us the recipe for mixing our chicken feed okay let's say goodnight thanks again guys I'll see you next Tuesday next Tuesday and then we'll wish you all a very Merry Christmas then and sign off until the new year. Pig videos coming out in a couple of days probably. Yeah, stay tuned for the pig video. It's going to be a riot. I know it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.